We wanted to share with you a project that we've been working on for about a year and a half. Um, it's about it's a virtual cemetery, and we've converted our local cemetery into a virtual format. We believe it's one of the first Islamic virtual cemeteries out there, um, but you know other communities have done so also. But uh, we wanted to share kind of our journey, how we got here. Um, I'm sure when you look at the panel, there's nothing that looks in common. There's three UC Berkeley students, a young gentleman from our community who's recently graduated. We have a young senior. I'm a mother of two. But somehow we were able to bond through this project and make a difference. And so our, uh, none of us are the type of people who feel comfortable being on a panel. Um, none of this was done for that reason. But I think sometimes you have to share your journey for, to inspire others. And also, we need all of you to help us. And this, we're just basically touching the surface. There's a lot of work to be done, and we'll kind of share how we got here. Um, so in uh, June of 2022, um, uh, Uncle Nihal and Auntie Shella, uh, who are a very prominent couple, they one of the founding couples of service, San Ramon Valley Islamic Center, her husband passed away. I was away that summer, and so when I came back in August, uh, from vacation, I actually reached out to her to pay my condolences and wanted to speak with her, um, you know, uh, after doing so, you know, because things were still fresh and she was still going through a lot of grief, I would keep in touch with her on a weekly basis or every other week, give her a call. On one of the calls, she shared with me, you know, how frustrating it was for her that when she'd go to visit her husband at the cemetery, that there was all these issues and I wasn't really fully aware, and I told her, okay, you know, next time, how about next week we meet at the cemetery? Uh, I had never actually been to Five Pillars. I've been in this area since 2001. Uh, my father passed away. Actually, I'm from Stockton. And so we have an Islamic cemetery in Lodi, and so all my experience at the graveyard had been in Lodi. Uh, a lot of people who had passed or lost their parents, I would just see them at MCC or service and I never actually made it to Five Pillars. So that was my first visit to Five Pillars. Uh, she kind of gave me a little tour of the place and showed me, you know, her kids would tell her, don't go, you might twist your ankle, you know, like it was muddy. There was, you know, it was just, there was lots of things that needed to be improved. Um, and so, her and I decided, um, you know, just to give her comfort, and I also thought, okay, let's find out. We came and visit, visited Munir Safi, who is, as you know, kind of the heartbeat of MCC. Um, and uh, he, we met him one afternoon, and he said, look, Five Pillars is going through a lot of stuff themselves right now, as much of you, many of you know. Um, I don't think that they can take on much more right now, but, you know, I have had this vision of, having a virtual cemetery because I've had people come, even flown from out of state, and not been able to find the loved one and gone back kind of disappointed. And so Auntie Shell and I said, sure, you know, we're not very tech savvy. How would we do this? And he said, look, got to go there, get the names. We'll plug them in. So, and I have two people, Basil Rizwan, who is a young graduate who's always dedicating his time to San Ramon Valley Islamic Center and MCC. He can help you. And I actually got an email from Celine, who's sitting to the left of me, um, who is a UC Berkeley student, who reached out to me asking me if there's any community service projects. He gave me these two names and numbers. And Auntie Shell and I thought, OK, you know, we decided to meet once a week at, at Five Pillars. And we thought what we'll do is we'll just take one block at a time and we'll try to get names and write them down. And But as we started doing that, just in a few weeks, we learned there was many graves that we couldn't even get the names. There was many graves we couldn't get to. And so we realized we actually need the help of Five Pillars. Um, but they were going through so much of their own stresses through the city and other things as well. So we did reach out to the family that was running it at the time or managing it. or I don't even know the details, but um, I was given a couple numbers and I talked to some people and finally one person said, look, I'll try and help you. And I assured him that, look, I'm not part of MCC. I'm not part of service. This is not a, a political thing. It's just a few community members who want to make a difference and take their energy in a positive way. And so... Um, 
what they said, look, one of the person said, I'll help you. I just need to get all the data together. And I wasn't sure if he was just being nice or if he really meant that. And so I kept in touch every few weeks. I'd say, hey, don't forget about me. I really still need the data. And one day I got all the data. And I, you know, I ran to the cemetery with my two kids. I have two uh, 12 and 14 year old. And I said, look, let's see if this is, you know, all accurate. Is it all complete? And it was. Um, and so we sifted through the data and I told Auntie Shella, I think we can actually, we might be able to move forward with this. So I emailed Basil, who was very happy to join. And I emailed Celine and she said, I'll meet you. And so last February um, on Super Bowl Sunday, when my parent, my husband and kids were busy, um, they, everybody met at my home on our dining table and we all talked. Auntie Shella was doing Sunday school. She patched in through Zoom. And then we visited the Five Pillars Cemetery all together. And, you know, everybody was struck in a way where like, yes, there's there's a need here. And, but also struck in the way that we want to do this. We want to make a difference. And so that was our very first meeting was last February. Um, and I wanted to just for you to know that like, it wasn't like we intended to make a virtual cemetery. It wasn't like that was what we were, our destiny or that was our goal. But somehow we were led to this. And so... After that, I will let everyone tell their version of what, you know, what happened after our first meeting and how we got this far. Auntie Shella, I'll let you go next. Okay. Yes. As-salamu alaykum. My name is Shahla, and I've been in this community since when there was no MCC. There was only SRVIC. So I've been living in this community since 1989. And my first experience to attend a janaza was in uh, was in 1999 when one of my friend, uh, my young friend, passed away, and we all went. And this had just came into existence. Uh, Sayyid Inamdar Sahab who was uh, my husband's friend and uh, sister Reshma's father. And a couple of other people wanted to start this cemetery. And m my husband was not a part of that, but he was very active uh, in uh, ISIB uh, establishing that masjid. And also he was friends with these people. So he was a part of that. So I was hearing all these things. So, the, so this cemetery just came into existence at that time. And I think my friend was one of the first uh, women, a few were there. She was in the very first row. At that time, all the women were not allowed to go in that Qabristan. We were all put in a big trailer that you see it is now painted green. That wasn't painted, huh? It's right. Oh, it's gray now. Okay, good. So we were told to stay inside that mobile home and remember that there was a window and we were taking turns peeking through the window because we wanted to really see what is happening to uh, my friend or our friend and we wanted to be a part of the process but at that time whatever the Islamic uh, knowledge was and people were old-fashioned we were not allowed but alhamdulillah many things have changed since then and now so I always visited that cemetery with my husband. I've never went there alone. So somebody's janaza, somebody's janaza. We have lost so many people that I knew, Abid Bhai, Idris Bhai, and so much, and, and young children also, my friend's daughter, my friend's son. So I have been there many times, but I did not spend more time, just did the janaza, made the dua, and came back. But since my husband passed away, I, I went there more often and spent more time all by myself. And one day I was just sitting there and I was looking around and I was thinking that, is this a place where I want my children, my grandchildren to come more often? Yes, I want them to come here, visit their dada and their khala and whoever, but it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit depressing and I want it to be more pleasing. and. As a, as a community member, this is my job too. I mean, if my loved one is there and if I want to make a change, this is my job. I have to start doing something also. So I looked around and said, maybe we can do something here. Uh, I want to go and visit my friend Atika, but I could not find her grave. So I, 
took a, a trip. I mean, I walked and walked and walked. And when you look at those black stones, you sometimes pass the person you're looking for, and you don't recognize, oh, this is the person I was looking for. You just pass the person. So I just got tired of looking a couple of, for a couple of people, and then just I made a collective dua for everybody. And I came home, and then I met Shazia, and the whole thing started after we had a little talk together, and then you heard what happened after that. Mashallah, Shazia has been on top of everything, and. Uh, I, I cannot thank enough. And one thing I learned is that we believe that once you have good intentions and when you decide something to do in the name of Allah and in the, in the, in the uh, path of Allah, Allah will send you the, the help. And this is all the help miraculously we found. We were looking to do this project they were looking to do some project, and we got together, and mashallah, it has done something, and the result is here. This is the first step, and I was talking to Sister Reshma that there's a lot more to be done. And I'm sure most of you have been to Five Pillars a few times at least, um, and um, you have seen the conditions there. They are getting better now. All of a sudden, Sister uh, Reshma has started doing things there, so you will see a boundary wall and all these cleaning. But there is still more to be done, and inshallah, we will. Um, we dream that one day it will be a place like a park and children will stay there longer and pray for their loved ones. Maybe they'll pray for me there too, you never know. So that's one thing for sure. We all have to end up somewhere. Uh, so yeah, so that's the project that you're going to see what these kids have done. So I'm gonna give this to Russell. Russell, I'm gonna have you. Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Basil Rizwan. And uh, I got involved with the Five, Five Pillars project uh, just through regular volunteer that I do within the community. And, uh, you know, there's these very interesting projects that come around. Um, sometimes you'll see volunteers uh, cleaning carpets and, uh, you know, moving furniture around, which is all very important stuff. And then occasionally uh, an exciting project like this comes around. And the reason I say exciting is not because, you know, it's, uh, it's a cemetery. Uh, usually that's a very morbid uh, topic and people shy away from it. Uh, but that's, that's the only guarantee that that's the only guarantee that we are given. Uh, in, in the Quran, it says, uh, you know, Allah says, Kullu nafsin that ikatul maut. That is the only guarantee. Every soul shall taste death. And when you walk through the gates at Five Pillars or any cemetery, uh, you see that. On the left side, there's, there's a whole section dedicated to infants and youth um, from a couple days old, a couple months old, uh, one year, three year, five year, ten years. Uh, and then as you walk through the graveyard, as you know, all of us uh, had the opportunity to do so, and, and you can too, you can just walk up, you don't need to make an appointment, um, you see that. You see folks who are younger than you, the same age as you, older than you, uh, and it really, really puts things into perspective. Uh, and again, this is not to be morbid, that you know, we're all gonna die, there's no point. Uh, rather, it is a reminder that we only have one life, this, this is it, uh, and we try to do the best we can. Uh, so this project uh, for us, uh, we hope is uh, you know Sadaka Jaria. Uh, it's a re you know recurring charity, a continuous charity, um, and and there's so many more opportunities like this. There's more room, uh, as uh, uh, you know, Sister Shazia and Auntie said. Uh, this is just the beginning. So get involved, uh, you know, in these types of projects. The little bit that you can do, uh, I know there's some ideas to improve. Yes, the technology side, but also at the Five Pillars Cemetery, uh, you know, beautifying it. Uh, putting up benches, trees, um, and just making it a more inviting place. Um, so that's that's my little bit on how I got involved. Um, uh, one more thing I would like to add, just from a uh, perspective of getting involved in the community, uh, you don't have to get involved in the cemetery if you don't feel comfortable. Uh, there's there's a huge demand for your skill, for your time, uh, for your energy, for your ideas, uh, which is you know a collection of uh, this group actually right here. Um, uh, and, and you come together, you don't have to be officially part of an organization, but you can just have an idea or a skill set, get involved and, and make something of it. Uh, so that's my little spiel. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
my name is Abdullah. I'm going to keep this very brief, inshallah. So um, I first got involved uh, in this project. I was a junior at UC Berkeley. I got involved in this project through the MSA, and uh, basically that's where I got to know Celine. I knew Yusuf from before, but I got to know him a bit better. And there's also a lot of other people who didn't get the chance to be here, So, but um, they, they were also involved. And But it wasn't until I went to the cemetery where I saw the, the need for this project, and that like sort of helped motivate me to pitch in a bit more into this project. And uh, yeah, I, I just uh, helped build the website. Um, the real heavy hitters are Yusuf and Celine, so I'll let them speak more about what they did. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Yusuf. I think Mashallah everyone covered a lot. Um, alhamdulillah, it was a great project. We all worked on it, uh, put a lot of work into it. Um, you know, not just you know everyone up here, but also a lot of people who are back in Berkeley who couldn't make it today. Um, alhamdulillah, inshallah, it'll be useful for everyone. Um, and yeah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Celine Musa. I uh, grew up in Sunnyvale, so close to here. And I'm a third year at UC Berkeley now. And as a computer science student, we spend a lot of time building projects for our classes. Um, there's also a lot of clubs on campus that cater to the environment or to the government, politics, and everyone kind of has their niche. And a year ago in January, February, when we reached out to MCC to Munir and we were put in touch with Shazia, we had come together as some Muslims in tech. And we were a group of students and we really just wanted to make an impact with the skills and the tools and the knowledge that we had that was for our community and not these uh, other groups and other projects on campus. We wanted to touch people that were really like close to our heart. So we reached out and Munir put us in touch with a project that really has brought us together in a really unique way and a really special way. Um, we've been able to uh, learn things like building websites and hopefully uh, you guys will benefit from the time and the tech that we've built. Uh, we are continuing to build projects. So this was one of the first projects that we came together to build. Um, we've now become a club on campus uh, as Muslims in tech. And if you guys have any problems or needs related um, to tech that you would like a solution for, that's kind of where uh, we'd like to come in and provide um, web development or app development and sort of build out anything that you feel like um, needs a solution with tech. So. This was a starting point, and there's, I'm sure, very many more projects to come from our group on campus. One thing I did want to add um, was when, right before, right when we got the data, and when we got Basel and uh, so, and uh, the MSA at UC Berkeley involved, um, Basel and I had this thought that look, we're really not experts. Um, we are undertaking something. Um, that you know, maybe with you know, maybe out of the. I mean, we had the, the obviously the manpower and the desire and the passion, but we also enlisted the advice of Imam Tahir. And so before we had that first meeting, we talked to him, and you know, he was very excited about the project. He obviously personally comes here so much, and he you know he showed us the, on his phone. He had an app of you know a little list of all the people and where they were buried, and when he comes here every time where he visits, and how it would be so great to navigate the process but he also gave us guidelines from an Islamic perspective what would be reasonable other communities like I mentioned do have Islamic uh, sorry have virtual cemeteries there's Jewish communities Christian communities um, sometimes they can you know be too flowery they post pictures you know uh, stories etc cetera, etc cetera. and so you know he advised us to keep it simple within you know just as the guidelines of our Dean are and he you know he he kind of gave us that final go which we needed before we begun and so he has also been a religious advisor for us we did show him he wasn't able to join us he's obviously got a busy schedule but uh, he did want to see it in the final so the students and I got on a zoom call three four weeks ago and showed him the final app he was very excited um, he said he I mean when he said he loved it we were all kind of jumped out of our seats um, and you know he obviously gave us advice he, he he you know directed us in how to get good content um, but you know, I just wanted to mention that he was also a part of blessing the project and giving us the confidence to move forward. 
Um, and now I'm just going to let the UC Berkeley students. And it was it was a really beautiful project in that we had seniors and we had youth and even my kids who were doing, you know, we, we were able to be at different stages in life and yet had this common bond and, you know, we're able to get somewhere. And we're hoping that it motivates you to know that even if you're not a board member or not on a, on a you know, committee or whatever, you can still help, you can still change things. Um, even if you're the youth, you can still help us. We need all that, you know, beautiful energy, especially in a project like this. It was really nice to have youngsters um, bring in their perspective. And um, I'm going to let who's going to be the person showing the site. Yusuf. Okay. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so alhamdulillah, uh, I guess the first thing is um, when you go to the site, you can see, uh, you know, information about five pillars, um, as well as, you know, a bunch of other resources relating to Janaza and like cemeteries in general. Um, so like one thing is, you know, obviously uh, sometimes when, you know, someone dies, it comes as a shock, um, you might not know the next steps. So we have the page, uh, you know, that tells you what to do when someone dies. Um, um, we also talk about, about like the process, the genetic process, uh, the burial procedure, um, a bunch of information about that, um, as well as the different services that Five Pairs offers, different forms, um, stuff like visiting etiquette, and so on. Um, but I guess the main thing is the map, of course. Um, so this is what allows you to, I guess, put in a name and find out where they are buried. Um, so if I try someone out here. Okay, Bismillah. Uh, so you put like Nahal Khan is how N I H A L Nahal Nazim Khan. Um, it'll tell me uh, he's located in No J J Grade Forty Eight. I just called him Habib. Okay, like this. <laughs> there it is. Okay, you can go. It shows you like compared to where it is in the map. Um, and you can see the name right there. Um, so yeah, alhamdulillah, it works pretty well. So find U-N-I-Z-A. And you can see right here, this was somebody that I had told me she could locate. And now we obviously, can. and you know, obviously, um, you know, we will, have, we will, we intend to work with five pillars and we intend to work with other organizations who also have shown interest to have them convert their sites. So we hope this will become a one-stop shop for all your Janata needs. We started with five pillars because obviously that's our local cemetery. And we did the same presentation at San Juan Valley Fox on Friday evening. And we're doing the same one here this weekend. Um, you know, we're hoping to obviously perfect it here. Um, we will need to get new names as people obviously join the cemetery. So we'll have to create a system of maintenance so the site lives beyond us. And, um, you know, and um, enlist the help of volunteers. I know Basu firm, um, Golden, Pen, Golden Pen, has offered to help. And, you know, and we'll, we'll kind of make a game plan. But if you are interested to help, if you'd like to, you know, even if it's a once a month cleanup, or it could be anything. It doesn't It doesn't have to be anything huge or detailed. You know, there's, there's lots of ways to help and give back. And, you know, we hope to have the site available to you. We wanted to get everyone feedback um, so we could make any changes um, and we hope to have it in your hands you know before Ramadan and you know they'll both centers have are will add it to their burial page so you'll have the barcode and all that and you can navigate but you know as possible and many people who, who, who work within the centers uh, mentioned you know the burial process is a, is a difficult process and there's a lot of things that need to be streamlined a lot of times you know, lots of mention, like people are making payment as they're driving to Janaza and the forums and like it's just a it would be nice if you could have one place where you could do all this and it could be like a one stop shop, um, you know, where you could uh, everybody could pull together and make the, the entire unfortunate process at least easy on you and you know, and um, and we should do it. It's, it's you know it's, it's an old system that needs updating. Um, and you know, and likewise, you know, as five pillars make there's an Mom saw her video at the end. We wanted to um, add in his uh, thoughts. Inshallah. Can you hear something? 
Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take like a second. We'll just, uh, sure. I, I, think I, I don't know where it, I don't know what it's called. Are you able to, do you want me to try to throw it? Or should we do it from here? Yeah, we'll just try to throw it from here. Yeah, we'll Yes, I, I, these are, I mean, this is what we have. Uh, we obviously did some chance, and we didn't want to add to, you know, the list of five pillars. Brothers and sisters, this is your brother Imam Tahir Anwar uh, reaching out to all of you. I wish I could be with you there in person. Unfortunately, um, I am unable to do so. In any case, uh, you know, subhanAllah, part of my responsibilities, part of my job uh, is, you know, getting, uh, marrying people off, performing their nikah. Uh, part of my job happens to be showing up when a child is born. Part of my job is also uh, showing up at a funeral prayer or at a burial. Um, and the most, the oft used burial site for us Muslims in the Bay Area happens to be the Five Pillars Farm in Livermore that all of us have been to so many times, either for a burial or just simply stopping by uh, to uh, make du'a for our loved ones or simply making du'a as we're driving up and down uh, the 580. In any case, uh, one of the things that we end up uh, encountering is that we go to the graveyard and uh, you know we don't know where the grave of a loved one is and we search and search and search and we're unable to find it or that of a friend. Um, of course, over the years, I have a running list on my phone um, of where all my friends or parents or relatives of friends are buried and when I do have some time I'll try to stop by at each of these graves you know one by one just as a sign of my love for these individuals and just this desire to make dua for them. It's always been my dream, my desire, my wish that you know we would be able to have a list um, a search engine if we may where you can type in someone's name and know exactly where they're buried. And about a year or so ago, uh, you know, Brother Munir from the MCC, Sister Shazia, he introduced S Sister Shazia to me along with a few other individuals. And, um, you know, just a few weeks ago, and at that time, I, I shared with them what my dream was, and also shared with them um, uh, a website of a, a graveyard in London, England, um, one that is close to my parents' home, that is local to us and our family, and said, you know, this would be an ideal model. And, you know, uh, within a year, with the help of the individuals at Five Pillars Farm, may Allah bless and reward all of them, um, they got all the names of where everyone is buried. And they've been able to come up with this database uh, where you can plug in someone's name and you know exactly where someone is buried. And I'm hoping that this website of theirs uh, turns into a one-stop shop for all things uh, Five Pillars Farm related where you can go, reserve a plot, 
uh, find someone's grave, make a payment, someone passed away, you know exactly what to do, download forms and so on and so forth. But in any case, this is an awesome start. May Allah bless this team and I'm in full support of this project and I would hope and pray that if any of you out there can support them in any which way possible, please go ahead and do so. Um, but hopefully this is the start of something really, really beautiful and a beautiful resource, uh, one that even other uh, graveyards in the community and in and around the United States are able to model uh, so that loved ones' uh, resting places can be found. These graveyards are going to be around for a very long time. And, um, you know, in, in 10, 15, 20, 50 years from now, you think of someone and you're like, I want to go to the grave of a friend's mom, a friend's dad, or, or whoever it was. And you have no idea. Now, you don't have to go to the actual grave to make dua for them. In fact, you don't even have to go to the graveyard. But there's a certain solace, certain peace that we find in standing next to the grave of a loved one. And uh, this search engine, hopefully, and this website uh, turns out to be a massive resource for all of us. So, Jazakumullah Khair to everyone that's worked on it. Jazakumullah Khair to all of you for showing up. And um, hopefully, inshallah, uh, you know, may Allah reward us and protect us and allow for our faith, al-Islam, uh, to be the guiding light for all of us and allow us to live on this path, pass on this path, and be of service to this deen, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.